on Exploratory Data Analysis EDA for customer churn prediction. In this video, we'll walk you through the process of exploring and analyzing a telco customer churn dataset to gain insights and prepare for churn prediction. Let's dive right into it. Before we begin, let's talk about the dataset we'll be working with. We've obtained this dataset from Kaggle, a popular platform for datasets and competitions. The dataset contains information about telco customers, including various attributes such as customer demographics, services subscribed, contract details, and whether the customer churned or not. Understanding customer churn, or the rate at which customers stop doing business with a company, is crucial for businesses to retain customers and optimize their services. You can find the link to download this dataset in the description below. Feel free to download it and follow along with us as we explore and analyze the data. We're going to break down a Python script that utilizes some popular libraries for data analysis and visualization. Let's dive in. First off, we have our import statements. These lines bring in the necessary libraries we'll be using throughout the script. We start by importing NumberPI, a library for numerical computing in Python. The alias NP is commonly used to reference NumberPI functions and objects. Next, we import Pandas, a powerful library for data manipulation and analysis. We assign it the alias PD for convenience. Seaborn comes next. It's a statistical data visualization library based on Matplotlib. We alias it as SNS for brevity. Matplotlib is one of the most widely used plotting libraries in Python. Here we import the ticker module from Matplotlib and assign it the alias tick dot. Finally, we import the pyplot module from Matplotlib, commonly aliased as PLT. This module provides a MATLAB-like interface for creating plots. Now that we've imported our libraries, let's move on to the next line. Percent matplotlib inline. This line is a special command used in Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. It tells the notebook to display matplotlib plots directly in the output cells. Next in the script, we have the line telco underscore base underscore data equals pd read underscore csv wa underscore fnuc underscore telco customer churn dot csv. This line reads a csv file named wa underscore fnuc underscore telco customer churn dot csv into a pandas data frame. The data frame is assigned to the variable telco underscore base underscore data, which we can use to perform various data analysis and manipulation tasks. The file is assumed to be located in the current working directory unless specified otherwise with the full file path. In this case, it seems like we're working with data related to telco customers in churn, as implied by the file name telco customer churn .csv. Now that we've loaded the data into our data frame, we're ready to explore and analyze it further using the functionalities provided by pandas. Telco underscore base underscore data dot head is used to display the first few rows of the data frame telco underscore base underscore data. By default, head displays the first five rows of the data frame. This is helpful for quickly inspecting the structure and content of the data. This method allows us to get a glimpse of the columns and the actual data values in those columns, giving us an initial understanding of the data set. Examining the first few rows can help us identify any missing values, understand the data types of different columns, and get an overall sense of the data set's characteristics. Once we've inspected the head of the data frame, we can proceed with further data exploration and analysis based on our objectives and research questions. The shape attribute returns a tuple representing the number of rows and columns in the data frame. For instance, if the shape of the data frame is 704321, it means there are 7043 rows and 21 columns. Understanding the shape of the data frame is essential as it provides valuable information about the size and structure of the data set. This information is useful for various data manipulation and analysis tasks, such as reshaping data, identifying outliers, and performing statistical calculations. By knowing the shape of the data frame, we can better plan our data analysis strategies and ensure that our operations are applied correctly across the dataset. The line telco underscore base underscore data dot columns dot values returns an array containing the names of all the columns in our data frame. This helps us quickly understand the different variables present in our dataset, which is crucial for further analysis and visualization. Following that, telco underscore base underscore data dot types displays the data types of each column in the data frame. This information is essential for understanding how the data is stored and interpreted, enabling us to perform appropriate data transformations and calculations. Lastly, we have telco underscore base underscore data dot describe, which provides summary statistics for numerical columns in the data frame. 
These statistics include count, mean, standard deviation, minimum, 25th percentile, median, 75th percentile, and maximum. This method helps us gain insights into the distribution and central tendency of the numerical data, aiding in data profiling and anomaly detection. By leveraging these functionalities, we can better understand the structure, content, and statistical characteristics of our telco customer churn dataset, setting the stage for more in-depth analysis and exploration. In this part of the script, we're visualizing the distribution of the target variable, churn, using a horizontal bar plot. We start by accessing the churn column in our telco customer churn dataset using telco underscore base underscore data, churn dot. Next, we use the value underscore counts method to calculate the frequency of each unique value in the churn column, which represents the count of churned and non-churn customers. Then we plot the result as a horizontal bar plot by specifying kind equals bar, which creates bars horizontally. We set the size of the figure using fig size sat face 8, 6, making the plot 8 inches wide and 6 inches tall. To provide meaningful labels for the axis, we set this label to count and the label to target variable using plt.slabel and plt.alabel respectively. Finally, we set the title of the plot to count of target variable per category using plt.title and adjust its position slightly above the plot with y equals 1.02 dot. This visualization gives us a clear understanding of the distribution of the target variable, which is essential for assessing class imbalance and guiding predictive modeling efforts. Now in this segment of the script, we're calculating the percentage distribution of the target variable churn in our telco customer churn dataset. We start by using the value underscore counts method to count the occurrences of each unique value in the churn column, representing churned and non-churn customers. Then we divide each count by the total number of entries in the churn column, which is obtained by using len telco underscore base underscore data churn dot. Multiplying this result by 100 gives us the percentage distribution of each unique value in the churn column. This calculation provides valuable insights into the proportion of churned and non-churned customers in our dataset, allowing us to assess the prevalence of churn and its potential impact on our analysis and decision-making processes. In this section, we're examining the distribution of the target variable churn in our telco customer churn dataset. We start by accessing the churn column in our data frame using telco underscore base underscore data churn. Next, we use the value underscore counts method to count the occurrences of each unique value in the churn column. This method provides us with a series where the index represents unique values in the churn column, in this case, yes for churn customers and no for non-churn customers, and the corresponding values represent the count of each occurrence. In this part of the script, we're obtaining detailed information about our telco customer churn dataset using the info method with the verbose equals true parameter. The info method provides a concise summary of the data frame, including the number of non-null values, the data type of each column, and memory usage. By setting verbose equals true, we ensure that additional information, such as the count of non-null values and data types for each column, is displayed. This detailed summary is beneficial for understanding the structure and characteristics of the dataset, identifying missing values, and planning data pre-processing steps. Analyzing the output of info helps us ensure data quality and make informed decisions when performing data analysis and modeling. In this section, we're visualizing the percentage of missing values in our telco customer churn dataset. First, we create a new data frame called Missing to store the percentage of missing values for each column. To calculate the percentage of missing values, we use the formula telco underscore base underscore data dot is null dot sum asterisk 100 slash telco underscore base underscore data dot shape zero which counts the number of missing values for each column, divides by the total number of rows, and then multiplies by 100. Next, we reset the index of the missing data frame to make column names accessible for plotting. Moving on, we set up the plot by creating a figure with a size of 16 inches wide and 5 inches tall using plt.figure, fig size sat face 16, 5 dot. We then use Seaborn's bar plot function to visualize the percentage of missing values. The x-axis represents the column name's index, column from the missing data frame, and the y-axis represents the percentage of missing values, zero column from the missing data frame. For customization, we rotate the x-axis labels by 90 degrees and set their font size to 7 using plt.sticks, rotation equals 90, font size equals 7. 
Additionally, we set the title of the plot to percentage of missing values using plt.title. Finally, we display the plot using plt.show. This visualization allows us to identify columns with a high percentage of missing values, guiding us in deciding how to handle these missing values during data preprocessing. In this part of the script, we're creating a copy of our original Telco customer churn dataset and assigning it to a new data frame named telco underscore data dot. To achieve this, we use the copy method on our original data frame, telco underscore base underscore data dot. Creating a copy of the data frame allows us to make modifications and perform data transformations on the copy without affecting the original data set. This is particularly useful when we want to experiment with different pre-processing techniques or analysis approaches while preserving the integrity of the original data. By creating a copy, we can explore various strategies and compare their effects on the data without risking inadvertent changes to the original data set. Here, we're converting the total charges column in our telco underscore data data frame to numeric data type using the PD to underscore numeric function. The PD to underscore numeric function is applied to the total charges column, which attempts to convert the values to numeric format. The errors equals coerce parameter is used to handle any errors during conversion by converting them to NAN, not a number, values. This conversion is helpful when dealing with numerical columns that contain values represented as strings, allowing us to perform numerical computations and analysis. After the conversion, we check for missing values in the data frame using telco underscore data dot is null dot sum, which returns the count of missing values for each column. By examining the output, we can identify if there are any missing values in the total charges column after the conversion. In this part of the script, we're using Boolean indexing to locate rows in the telco underscore data data frame where the total charges column contains missing values NAN. We start by using telco underscore data total charges dot is null to create a Boolean mask where true indicates rows with missing values in the total charges column. Next, we use this Boolean mask as an index to select rows from the data frame where the condition is true, effectively filtering out rows with missing values in the total charges column. By executing this code, we can inspect the specific rows in our data set where the total charges column contains missing values, allowing us to further investigate and potentially address these missing values. In this section of the script, we're removing rows with missing values from our telco underscore data data frame. We use the dropna method to remove rows containing any missing values. The how equals any parameter specifies that a row will be dropped if it contains any missing values in any column. By setting in place equals true, the changes are applied directly to the data frame telco underscore data without the need to reassign the result. Next, we're printing the maximum tenure from the tenure column in our clean dataset using telco underscore data tenure dot max. This gives us the maximum tenure value present in the tenure column after removing missing values. The output indicates that the maximum tenure in our dataset is 72 months. In this part of the script, we're grouping the tenure column into bins of 12 months and creating a new column called tenure underscore group to store the tenure group labels. We start by defining the labels for our tenure groups using a list comprehension. Each label represents a range of 12 months, starting from 1 to 72 months. Next, we use the pdcut function to bend the tenure column into intervals of 12 months. The range 1, 80, 12 specifies the bin edges, ensuring that each bin covers a range of 12 months up to the maximum tenure of 72 months. The right equals false parameter indicates that the intervals should be closed on the left and open on the right, meaning that the left endpoint of each interval is included in the interval, but the right endpoint is not. Finally, we assign the generated labels to the tenure underscore group column to indicate the respective tenure group for each row in the data frame. By grouping the tenure into bins of 12 months, we can analyze customer behavior and trends based on their tenure group, providing insights into customer retention and churn over time. Here, we're calculating the count of customers in each tenure underscore group, using the value underscore counts method. This method returns a series containing the counts of unique values in the tenure underscore group column sorted in descending order of frequency. By executing this code, we can observe the distribution of customers across different tenure groups, providing insights into how tenure is distributed among our customer base. In this section of the script, we're dropping the customer ID and tenure columns from our telco underscore data data frame. We use the drop method to remove these columns. The column sad face customer ID tenure parameter specifies the names of the columns to be dropped. 
The axis equals one parameter indicates that we're dropping columns, one for columns, zero for rows, and in place equals true ensures that the changes are applied directly to the data frame, telco underscore data dot. After dropping the specified columns, we display the first few rows of the data frame using the head method to confirm the changes. By removing these columns, we streamline our data set and focus on the relevant features for further analysis and modeling. In this segment, we're conducting univariate analysis on our telco customer churn data set. We iterate over each predictor variable in the data set excluding churn, total charges, and monthly charges using the enumerate function. Within the loop for each predictor, we create a separate figure using plt.figure i to visualize the distribution of the predictor variable and its relationship with the target variable churn dot. We use Seaborn's countlot function to create a count plot for each predictor. The x parameter specifies the predictor variable and the hue equals churn parameter colors the bars based on the churn status. By examining these plots, we can gain insights into how each predictor variable relates to churn, helping us identify potential patterns and factors influencing customer churn. In this part of the script, we're converting the churn column in our telco underscore data data frame to numerical values. We use numpy's np.where function to replace the values in the churn column. If the value is yes, indicating churn, it's replaced with one. Otherwise, if the value is no, indicating no churn, it's replaced with zero. This conversion is necessary for certain machine learning algorithms that require numerical inputs rather than categorical labels. Here's the updated script after converting the churn column in our telco customer churn dataset to numerical values using numpy's np.where function. This code snippet allows us to examine the first few rows of the telco underscore data data frame, verifying the conversion of the churn column to numerical values. In this part of the script, we're creating dummy variables for categorical features in our telco customer churn dataset using the pdget underscore dummies function. The pdget underscore dummies function converts categorical variables into dummy slash indicator variables, also known as one-hot encoding. This process creates a new binary column for each category in the categorical variable. We apply pdget underscore dummies to our telco underscore data data frame, resulting in a new data frame called telco underscore data underscore dummies, containing dummy variables for all categorical features. Finally, we display the first few rows of the telco underscore data underscore dummies data frame using the head method to inspect the changes. In this part of the script, we're creating a scatter plot to visualize the relationship between monthly charges and total charges in our telco customer churn data set. We use Seaborn's plot function to create the scatter plot. The data parameter specifies the data frame containing the data, while the X and Y parameters define the variables to be plotted on the X axis and Y axis respectively. Setting fit underscore reg equals false ensures that the plot does not include a regression line. By examining the scatter plot, we can explore the relationship between monthly charges and total charges, identifying any patterns or trends in the data. In this section of the script, we're visualizing the distribution of monthly charges for churned and non-churned customers in our telco customer churn dataset using kernel density estimation, KD, plots. We use Seaborn's key plot function to create KD plots for monthly charges. The first plot represents non-churned customers, indicated by telco underscore data underscore dummies, churn, equals equals zero, while the second plot represents churn customers, indicated by telco underscore data underscore dummies. Churn equals equals one dot. The color parameter specifies the color of the plots, with red indicating non-churn customers and blue indicating churn customers. By setting fill equals true, the area under each curve is filled, enhancing the visualization of the distribution. We then use the legend function to add a legend indicating the categories, no churn and churn positioned at the upper right corner. Additional customization includes setting the y-axis label to density, the x-axis label to monthly charges, and the title of the plot to monthly charges by churn using set underscore label, set underscores label, and set underscore title, respectively. This visualization allows us to compare the distribution of monthly charges between churned and non-churned customers, providing insights into potential differences in behavior between the two groups. In this portion of the script, we're creating kernel density estimation, KD, plots to visualize the distribution of total charges for churned and non-churned customers in our telco customer churn dataset. We utilize Seaborn's key plot function to generate KD plots for the total charges. 
The first plot represents non-churn customers specified by telco underscore data underscore dummies. Churn equals equals zero, while the second plot represents churn customers specified by telco underscore data underscore dummies churn equals equals one dot. The color parameter assigns colors to the plots, with red representing non-churn customers and blue representing churn customers. By setting fill equals true, the area under each curve is filled, enhancing the visualization of the distribution. We then add a legend using the legend function to indicate the categories, no churn and churn positioned at the upper right corner of the plot. Additional customization includes setting the y-axis label to density, the x-axis label to total charges, and the title of the plot to total charges by churn using set underscore label, set underscores label, and set underscore title respectively. This visualization allows us to compare the distribution of total charges between churned and non-churned customers, providing insights into potential differences in behavior between the two groups. In this part of the script, we're creating a bar plot to visualize the correlation between each feature and the target variable churn in our telco customer churn dataset. We start by creating a figure with a size of 20 inches wide and 8 inches tall using plt.figure, fig size sad face 28. Dot. Next, we calculate the correlation between each feature and the target variable, churn, using the CORR method on the telco underscore data underscore dummies data frame. We then extract the correlation values for churn using telco underscore data underscore dummies dot CORR churn dot. The sort underscore values ascending equals false method sorts the correlation values in descending order to visualize the features with the highest positive correlation at the top. Finally, we create a bar plot using plot, kind equals bar, where each bar represents the correlation between a feature and the target variable. By examining this plot, we can identify which features are most strongly correlated with churn, helping us understand the factors that influence customer churn in our dataset. In this section, we're creating a heat map to visualize the correlation matrix of our telco customer churn dataset. We begin by creating a figure with a size of 12 inches wide and 12 inches tall using plt.figure, fig size sad face 12 12. Dot. Next, we use Seaborn's heat map function to generate the heat map. The telco underscore data underscore dummies dot corr computes the correlation matrix for all features in the dataset. We specify the color map paired using the map parameter to ensure clear visualization of positive and negative correlations. The heat map visualizes the correlation values using a color scale where darker colors represent stronger correlations. Analyzing this heat map allows us to identify patterns of correlation between different features in our dataset, providing insights into potential relationships and dependencies among variables. In this part of the script, we're splitting our telco customer churn dataset into two separate data frames based on the target variable churn for bivariate analysis. We create a data frame, new underscore df1 underscore target zero, containing rows where churn equals zero, indicating non-churn customers. Similarly, we create another data frame, new underscore df1 underscore target one, containing rows where churn equals one, indicating churn customers. These data frames allow us to perform bivariate analysis by comparing different variables between churned and non-churn customer groups. This function uniblot takes four parameters, df for the data frame, call for the column to visualize, title for the title of the plot, and hue for grouping by another variable. Inside the function, we set up Seaborn styles in context to enhance the appearance of our plots. We customize font sizes for axis labels and title to ensure better readability. Then we create a new figure and axis, calculate the width of the figure based on unique values in the column and hue, and set the figure size accordingly. We rotate x-axis labels for better readability, set the y-axis scale to logarithmic, and set the title for the plot. Finally, we create a count lot using Seaborn's count lot function, passing the data frame, column, order of values, hue, and palette. This function allows us to easily visualize univariate analysis of our telco customer churn dataset with customizable plots. Now let's use our custom function uniplot to visualize the distribution of gender for churn customers in our telco customer churn dataset. Let's dive into the script. Here, we're calling the uniplot function with specific parameters, new underscore df1 underscore target1 as the data frame containing churn customers, call equals partner to visualize the partner column title equals distribution of gender for churned customers for the plot title and hue equals gender to group by gender. 
This will allow us to observe the distribution of gender among churned customers, categorized by whether they have a partner or not. Now let's visualize the distribution of gender for non-churned customers in our Telco Customer Churn dataset using our custom function uniblot. Let's take a look at the script. In this script, we're calling the uniblot function with specific parameters, new underscore df1 underscore target zero, as the data frame containing non-churned customers, call equals partner to visualize the partner column. Title equals distribution of gender for non-churned customers for the plot title and hue equals gender to group by gender. This enables us to observe the distribution of gender among non-churned customers, categorized by whether they have a partner or not. Now let's use our custom function uniplot to visualize the distribution of payment methods for churn customers in our telco customer churn dataset. Let's see how it's done in the script. In this script, we're calling the uniplot function with specific parameters new underscore df1 underscore target1 as the data frame containing churn customers, call equals payment method to visualize the payment method column. Title equals distribution of payment method for churn customers for the plot title and hue equals gender to group by gender. This will help us observe the distribution of payment methods among churn customers categorized by gender. Let's continue exploring the distribution of contract types for churned customers in our Telco Customer Churn dataset using our custom function uniplot. Here's the script to achieve that. In this script, we're utilizing the uniplot function with specific parameters, new underscore df1 underscore target1 as the data frame containing churned customers, call equals contract to visualize the contract column. Title equals distribution of contract for churned customers for the plot title and hue equals gender to group by gender. This allows us to observe the distribution of contract types among churned customers, categorized by gender. Now let's delve into the distribution of tech support services for churn customers in our Telco Customer Churn dataset using our custom function uniplot. Here's the script to visualize it. In this script, we're employing the uniplot function with specific parameters, new underscore df1 underscore target1 as the data frame containing churn customers, Call equals tech support to visualize the tech support column. Title equals distribution of tech support for churned customers for the plot title and hue equals gender to group by gender. This enables us to examine the distribution of tech support services among churned customers categorized by gender. In this script, we're utilizing the uniblot function with specific parameters, new underscore df1 underscore target1 as the data frame containing churned customers, Call equals senior citizen to visualize the senior citizen. Column title equals distribution of senior citizen for churned customers for the plot title and hue equals gender to group by gender. This allows us to examine the distribution of senior citizens among churned customers categorized by gender. In this section, we'll save our process telco customer churn dataset to a CSV file named tel underscore churn dot CSV dot. Let's see the script to achieve this. In this script, we're using the to underscore CSV method to save our data frame, telco underscore data underscore dummies, to a CSV file named tel underscore churn dot CSV dot. The parameter index equals false ensures that the data frame index is not written to the CSV file. This allows us to store our process dataset for future analysis or modeling tasks. 